Welcome everyone again. It's great to have you here with us. It's wonderful that we can worship our Lord together and obviously be fed from the Word of God for the glory of His name and that He works in our lives because He is alive. As I uh, already mentioned in the beginning, today is World Refugee Day and uh, we have uh, dear Fatima and dear Melanie with us and we bless you in the name of Jesus and let us pray for them and let us also pray for all those who are uh, going through this story of, of their lives. So, Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that you understand them. Uh, your son had to flee to Egypt um, uh, only a few months uh, of birth. So, you understand all those who have to leave their country and go to another and to move from one place to another. And you have a patience and love and open arms and kindness for all of them. You have that for all of us. Into your hands we place ourselves. And we also pray for Darda Yan who is going to come and, and share uh, from your word because your message is true. You are true and you are life and we want to receive from your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please come forward and uh, may God bless you. And we want to hear what God has to say through you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I greet you the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, may his peace and grace be with all of us and our families and those around us and continue to lead us uh, through, through the service and our lives. So I pray as well that may I be a voice alone and nothing else, but may God be glorified and may he draw us closer to him through his word as we learn and put in practice as well what his word says. And it's a living word. And as Pastor Marino mentioned before, uh, a lot of the things happening here speak so much to our lives and where we are at. And as you know, we continue in the series of the life of Joseph uh, in Genesis. And today uh, we'll be in chapter 41, chapter 41 of Genesis, chapter 41 uh, of Genesis. I've titled this message, Free at Last, Free at Last. And... Uh, I believe we all remember the moment now Joseph will finally be uh, freed from prison. So I'll just paraphrase kind of like the chapter. I'll just tell the story with my own words. But then at different times in the course of the message, I may, uh, I may go at different verses. But I'll just paraphrase the story, hoping, hoping as well that you have a good idea of the story. But practically now Joseph is still in prison and uh, the cupbearer that he helped is out of the prison. And as Pastor Marino mentioned the other time, he is still another two years in prison. So he is waiting like maybe that cupbearer that I helped out, maybe he will feel some compassion, maybe he have some kind of debt toward me, so he's hoping now, and kind of like the cupbearer is kind of like his last human resource, so, but he's still in prison, another two years, and finally something happens, the pharaoh, the, 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 the leader of, of Egypt, has a couple of dreams, and these dreams are disturbing him seem very important to him, and he's seeing them over and over again. He calls his, all his counselors and magicians and all the people who can have some kind of interpretation and some kind of idea, and he calls them out, and he tells them his dream, and nobody's able to interpret. And at that point in time, the cupbearer, he remembers, and he says, Pharaoh, when I was in prison, there was a man, and I had a dream, and he gave me an interpretation of, of my dream, and actually also of the, of the baker, and it happened exactly as he said. I was freed, and he was hanged. So his interpretation came to a realization, and the Pharaoh said, 
call this man. Let us bring this man. Who is this man? So Joseph was fixed, you know, he, he was dressed up and washed and, and brought before the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh tells him the dreams that he's having. So Pharaoh is having two dreams and there are two different dreams, but actually they are one dream of the same uh, with different elements in it, but they actually mean the same thing. So he's seeing seven cows and they're very... Very, well, uh, very, very healthy cows, very big cows, and they're doing well, and they're prospering, and then he sees seven cows, and actually, they're ugly and skinny, and they eat the first seven cows. And then he sees, uh, falls asleep again, and he sees this other dream uh, with the seven heads of grain, and they're healthy and good, and then he sees seven others that are not healthy and good, and they're not doing well, and they eat the first seven. So he tells to Joseph the dream. So Joseph says, he says they are one of the same and they mean the same thing and it means God is emphasizing it. For sure it is going to come to, to, to realization and as well is going to happen soon and it means God is not changing his mind. It means God is doing this. That's the reason why he's emphasizing it two times. And as well Joseph with uh, with the interpretation of the dream, he as well gi gives a good counsel, a good advice, and I believe a great encouragement for us down in the Balkans, which we're, we're full with problems, but, you know, rarely when we mention the problems, we mention the solutions, but Lord help us to give good counsel, that when we complain about something as well, to give some good counsel and some solution, because our God has solutions as well, amen? amen. So Joseph gives a, a good counsel, a good solution, and he says how, how, how that, uh, what, what this dream means. It means for seven years, uh, the numbers, the seven, cow, uh, the seven cows, and as well the, um, the seven heads of grain, it means there are seven years. So the first for seven years, Egypt will prosper. There will be a very prosperous time. So he says all the pro prosperity that you're going to have, all the grain that you collect, Bring this to collect and bring someone to administrate this and administrate other people that will be put in, in the service. And then this person who has this wisdom and this, and this administration can report to Pharaoh. So for these seven years to collect everything, because after these seven years, there are going to be seven years of famine. There are going to be seven hard years where the people will starve, they will need food. So then we can distribute and share and we can sell this food and so forth. So, the Pharaoh likes Joseph's interpretation. And even more, he's marveled by his, uh, by his counsel, by his advice. So he says, where can we find a more wiser person? Let us put you. And Joseph ends up from being a prisoner to going to the pa palace of the Pharaoh himself. From that prison that, as Pastor Marino was trying to emphasize so much, it is not like our modern prisons right now, was, was this pit, these terrible prisons. In that time, he ends up from that pit. He ends up now in the palace of the Pharaoh, second in charge. So the Pharaoh says, after me, you are the one, you are my number two. You'll lead everything, you'll organize everything, you know, and you will be in charge. I'll still be the Pharaoh, but you will be in charge. So he is some kind of prime minister of, of today. He is in charge, but the Pharaoh is still the Pharaoh of the country and the one in power, but he is the second. So what a shift of events. So Joseph now is in this new position and he is administering everything and everything is happening as God gave to Joseph. So, first of all, I want to talk, now that we have more or less a story, and Joseph is in, in, in charge, and he builds a family, and everything seems to going uh, according to uh, the interpretation God gave to Joseph, and now it seems a bright time for Joseph. He's out of the prison. At last, he's out of the prison. At last... He is in freedom. First, he was put in some hole by his brothers. 
and then he ends up as a slave, and then for a short time, uh, he is working in one of the uh, chief officer's house, and then he ends up in prison, and in prison for 13 years, and two years that he could even be been out earlier, but what I want to emphasize, my first point is, he's out of prison, but not before time, not before time. Just imagine for a second with me, if Joseph would have gone out of prison, if this cupbearer, which actually would have told to the Pharaoh and, you know, made a favor and actually brought out uh, Joseph from prison, most that Joseph would have had would have been his freedom and maybe some favor, something to settle for him there in Egypt, but that would have been more or less. Uh, that, 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 that would have been more or less of what would have happened or what the cupbearer could have done for him if he would have gone out of the time of God. Meaning the time of God and our time many times is different. What God is planning and, and His ways and His plans are greater than our ways and our plans. But Joseph... He didn't come out of prison. He didn't come out in freedom at the wrong time. Those two other years were not unnecessary years on God's vision, on God's picture, on God's view of things. Joseph went out of prison at the right time. He went out of the prison when he was needed the most, when actually Pharaoh would have the dreams, when this need to be in Egypt, when Pharaoh actually can put him second in command, and actually he can provide and be a blessing for his own people back home, his father and all his siblings and all his relatives, so they'll not starve, and so the promises of God can continue, and the people of Israel can continue and be a blessing to the nations. You see the big picture? There is a big picture, as we spoke as well in the past. But then there is a limited picture. When we are in the midst of all those, when we are in the midst of the prison, when we are in the midst of whatever our prison may be, and maybe most of us or all of us have never been in a physical prison or will never be in a physical prison, I hope not. But the point is, we might have been in other kinds of prisons. In a prison of sin, in a prison of some kind of dependency, in a, a prison of some kind of weakness in our life, in a prison of a financial need, in a prison of some kind of hard situation, in a prison that maybe our own work and life and family, it looks like a prison to us, that maybe we are stuck in there. I don't know what kind of prison you might be. Or I don't know in what kind of prison you might have been. But the point is, God is going to set you free. And He is going to set you free in His own timing and not your own timing. There has been times in my own life, and I think I've mentioned this in the past as well. When I've been in this kind of prison, and when I've been in, 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 in the midst of all those situations, in the midst of all those pains and unknowns, I've said to the Lord, Lord... Just get me out of here. And I believe in my heart, Joseph might have said that a lot of times. 13 years? It's a long time. 13 years in that kind of prison? I imagine in my heart, Joseph has said a lot of times, God, get me out of here. Give me my freedom back. Get me out of this prison. And all the questions and the unknowns that he might have. He might have just said, Lord, set me free. You can do anything. And I've said that to God many times. God... You are the God of the impossible. Get me out of this situation. Give me the freedom that I need from this situation. Get me out of this desperation, this pain, and this prison. And maybe that might have been you. And maybe you might have had a lot of questions. And as I continue, the point is, interestingly enough, God gives to Joseph no reason. At the time that he is there, and in the midst of all those things... God doesn't give a particular reason to Joseph. He doesn't say, hey, I'm keeping you here this, many, this long and for all these years, or oh, a bit longer, you know, because I have this plan. And he, 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 the scripture doesn't, doesn't, doesn't say that. The scripture doesn't say that God gives any particular reason to Joseph. So Joseph is there 
And not only he's going what he's going through, but as well he doesn't understand. He, he has no explanation, no reasons. It's, everything to him is unclear, it's foggy. And maybe God does that in our lives sometimes. Maybe he doesn't give us a reason. Maybe we ask for one or more than one, but he doesn't give us one maybe. And we don't understand. We are all confused. We are in the midst of all that. But my encouragement to you, in the life of later events, my encouragement to you, from the life of Joseph, my encouragement to us, is let us trust to God. As the great quote says, we trust our unknown future to a, to a known God. We know our God. God has proven himself over and over again. Our future might be unknown. Our situations might be unknown. Our present and future might be unknown. But God is not unknown. He's known. He's known to us. He was known to Joseph. And he fulfilled his promises. He always does. He is always going to get you out of your trouble. That's what he says. Many are the afflictions. Many are the troubles of the righteous. But God frees them. From them all. In a time or another. Here or later. But God always does it. And he did it in Christ Jesus. For once and for all. But in, through our life as well. So in the light of the later events. Sometimes now. As we're going to come in the story. Joseph will be out. Everything going to be going to be fine. Everything going to be bright. And at last he will be free. But the point is. The point is that God already saw everything. God has no past and present and future. All is same to God. All is present. That's why he says, I am. It means in any time, he is. He just is. He's there. He knows no time. We know time. We are limited. But God is not limited. So Joseph later on, when he sees backwards, he can understand, whoa. Ah, that's why God let me pass through these things. And He let me longer than I wish. And He let me longer than I believe that my power and my strength and my ability can stand for. Now I understand. Has that happened to your life? It has happened to my life. When everything has been over and done with? Ah, now I understand. Whoa, I got the lesson now. Wow. Now this is a big picture. What an experience. Whoa, now I can see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Whoa, how faithful you are. But the point is, God wants to train us that we can already say that while we are in the midst of those things. While we are in our prison, in our difficulties, or whatever that might be in our lives. The Lord wants to train us that we can trust Him when we don't see everything. When we don't see and we don't understand and we don't have the solution. God wants us to say, God, I trust you. I don't understand. I don't know the reasons. I don't see the future. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust in you that you have my best, my best benefit. You want my best benefit. You, you have the best heart for me and you have the best for my life. God, I trust you and I surrender. You need to know that nothing is a coincidence in our lives. All our difficulties and all our pain and all the sufferings and the struggles that we go through and all the Joseph prisons in our own lives are never in vain. Are never in vain. They are never insignificant. They are always significant to God. God is there with us and He is doing something in us and He is going to set us free. But as well... He is making a preparation in us. Have you ever heard of the school of the Holy Spirit? The school of the Holy Spirit is sometimes, it's a lonely school. It's a painful school. It's, it's a school that we maybe sometimes go through things that we don't want to, or we don't imagine, or out, are, are out of our control. John the Baptist went in such a school. Jesus himself went in such a school. Moses and Abraham and Jacob and, and, and Joseph that we were studying. Many others went through this school. They went through this school. The, the prophets and many of the apostles, they went through this school. And if our Lord went through this school, 
obviously a metaphorical school. It's not a real school, guys. Not that kind of school. If our Lord went through this school, this school of the Holy Spirit, this school of sufferance and pain many times in this Joseph prisons, who are we to say that we just want to skip this school? We just want to graduate with masters, you know, just right away without going through any school. We just want our diploma and we want to be this spiritual guy and, you know, we, we, we don't want any of this. Lord, get me to become that man. I want to be more like Jesus, but without the pain, without the sufferance, without the cross. Make me more like Jesus. Brothers and sisters, there is not such Christianity. If Joseph had said, Lord, just get your way through my way. It just doesn't work like that. There is God's way and His way. And sometimes that might be a hard, painful way. That might be a hard, painful road. Maybe there might not be a shortcut. But God is doing a preparation in you and me. Amen? Amen. He's preparing you and me for a purpose. Do you believe that? I believe that. I believe that in my own life. That He is preparing me. And now more and more, after every wave and every wave of the storms of my life, I stronger and stronger believe and more and more I rely to the Lord that He has a purpose. That He is preparing me for something. That He is preparing us for something. And He was preparing Joseph for something. Just imagine this teenager. You know, he's a spoiled boy of his father. And everybody loves him and everybody is serving him. And his brothers are not happy with him. But he has servants of his father. And all his life, you know, in his teenager years, he's just, he, he's used to being served. He's being used that, you know, he's Joseph, right? And we know in his foolishness, he was even boasting with his brothers about his dreams and not so wisely. And, you know, remember Joseph, right? Remember Joseph as a, as a young man. But now, after all these years, first in the service of, the, of, of one of the chief officers, now he needs to get used from being served by others. He needs to serve himself. And then even more than that, even more than that kind of service, now he's in prison. He now needs to serve there in prison. And, 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 and serving after serving, he's being humbled. He's being broken. He's being worked by God to form the character that God wants in him. The Joseph now, after 13 years in prison, is a much, much more different Joseph than he was before. I didn't emphasize before, but I was waiting for now. When Joseph answers to Pharaoh about giving the interpretation, even giving the counseling, he gives all glory and all credit to God. He says, it's God. It's God. It's God who is giving this. It's God who is giving. He gives an interpretation. He gives a solution. When we are broken many times, it teaches us to depend so much on God. Lord, help me, help us to rely and depend more and more on you. Not only when our human resources end. Not only when our human resources has, have, have finished. And you can even call the cupbearer as one of the resources. Joseph trying to think and go out of the prison in his own strength. Wanting to go because he, he did a favor. So maybe this guy, you know, will take him out and remember the favor. And in some sense, of course, a natural desire, a natural, a natural thinking. But the point is, it's with our resources. And I've done that many times. I've tried many of my resources. But God teaches us and trains us to depend solely on Him. May God be our beginning and our end. May He be our first resource. Before we call our doctor, our lawyer, our counselor, before we call our husband and wives, before we call even our pastor, our friend, before we call anyone, let us call God. Let us call Jesus. God, you are my first and my last. You are my first option and my last option. You are my resource. It doesn't mean God is not going to use those people. It doesn't mean God is not going to use other things. But the point is, He is the one we rely on. And to Him we give all credit and all glory. To God and God alone. To God and God alone. It wasn't Joseph and he realized this. After 13 years in prison... And after through the thorough preparation that God had done in him. And can you imagine the shift as well? From prison, from being a slave and a prisoner and ending up second in charge. 
of the greater empire of that time, of the greatest kingdom of that time, to be the second in charge, to lead such a huge nation, and to be the second in charge. What a great responsibility. But God prepared Joseph for such a time, for such a moment. And all became clear to him. And all may be going to become clear to us. Maybe not now, or maybe it has become. But the point is, let that be a lesson for the other times. For the other times when we're going to be in similar situations, or we're going to be in other kinds of struggles. Let us, Joseph, be an example to us to understand the preparation that God is making in us. I believe more than the prison itself, we can say that Joseph was free at last, not only from his prison, definitely from the prison, but he was free at last from his pride, from his spoiledness, from his doubts, from his fears, from his unknowns. He was free at last from all the things that were troubling him and unknown. Why my brother is this? And why the cupbearer forgot me? Why should I end up here? And all the unknowns of the pain and the sufferings through life and through the years. He was free at last. He at last had learned to have a dependency on God. And God had last given him a form and ready for the next step where he wanted Joseph to be in the office. Brothers and sisters, God has great plans for you. God has great plans for your life. Learn from the life of Joseph at this time, going out of prison and going out in the position that he is of the wonders that God can do in your lives. I don't know how dark your prison looks like. I don't know what your situation looks like. I know mine's in the past and now. You have your own. They're all different. But they are all kind of one of the same. But I know something. I don't know those things. But I know some, something. Or better say, I know someone. I know Jesus Christ. I know our God and King. The one who took out Joseph from prison. The one who used the life of Joseph amazingly. The one who made all those things and who kept his promises is true and alive today. And he keeps his promises today. So he's going to keep his promises in your life. Go forward. Push forward. Trust God. Rely on him. And let the process in you. And let in the midst of all those things. Praise our God. Because he is worthy. And he is worthy indeed. And something beautiful is going to come out in you. From what you believe that was impossible. And for what you believe what can come out of this. Freedom is coming. And only Jesus brings that and many other things with it. God be glorified and God bless you.